Hi everyone, welcome back to our video series of case study analysis from the basic tutorial on simulation of microgrids control using MATLAB and Simulink. In our last video, we evaluated the simulation of the second case study of a microgrid operating in a grid-connected mode, including voltage control loops. And, in this video, I am going to present a step-by-step -step overview of the third case study of a microgrid operating in island mode. Remember that in this condition, the microgrid is not connected to the power utility grid, and the network feeders, as voltage amplitude, frequency and phase, are supplied by the converters controlled as network forming, working equivalently as voltage source. The purpose of this case is to implement a primary control loop based on the droop control method by adjusting the frequency and the voltage values with respect to the active and reactive power signals. The schematic design for this case on Simulink has one DC source that emulates the distributed generator, three-phase half-bridge IGBT suites from S1 to S6 representing a DC to AC converter that is operated by controlling the modulating signal, as well as electrical components including inverting output inductance and resistance, filter capacitance and dumping resistance, and line inductance and resistance. Besides, one local load, measurement units of current and voltage, and one control subsystem, with no AC power grid emulator anymore. Now, into the control block. Again, they are the alphabet subsystem, in which a three-dimensional phaser of the measured current and voltage units are converted into a two-dimensional orthogonal phaser, defined as alpha and beta. This conversion is performed using Clark transform, and it is applied to simplify the analysis and control of the three-phase converter. In this case, it is also included additional parameters that correspond to the line current measurements, which are used to determine a reference voltage value that is applied in the voltage control loop. The voltage and current control loop, in which a modulating signal is generated based on the alpha and beta components of the measured current and voltage values. And finally, the space vector modulation, which transforms the modulating signal given in alpha and beta components to pulses for each of the six switches of the converter. Taking a closer look at the voltage and current loop, we have a voltage reference generator block, a voltage control loop and a current control loop. In the voltage reference generator block, reference voltage components are produced, which are implemented in the voltage control loop that produce reference current components that induces the modulating signal for the converter in the current control loop. Into the reference voltage generator subsystem, it has a reference power calculation block for active and reactive power reference values estimation with low-pass filters that aim to reduce possible distortions a droop equations block that applies the primary control based on the droop method, in which the inertial property of conventional power systems is virtually emulated in the network forming converter by regulating the voltage amplitude and frequency proportionally to the active and reactive power components. And finally, the sinusoidal generator block, which produces the reference voltage as function of time characterized by the amplitude, phase angle, and also a defined virtual output impedance. Now, going back to the previous subsection, in the voltage control loop, one proportional plus resonant compensator is implemented to eliminate the error comparing the measured output voltage and the generated reference voltage. The produced reference current signal in this block is based on the control signal generated in the compensator and on a feed-forward term corresponding to the network current. And again, the current control loop, implemented as in the previous cases. Now, running the simulation, we can evaluate this particular case. 
Here we can see the outputs. First, as seen in the previous case, this modulated signal plot demonstrates the alpha leading the beta component by 90 degrees, verifying the response of the system. In this plot, the voltage tracking demonstrates a precise operation from the voltage control loop, with the voltage response following the reference value. This next plot validates the current tracking of the generated alpha component over the reference value defined by the current control loop. And here, the active and reactive power plot. Since the defined load for the simulation is mainly resistive, the reactive power component is nearly zero. Also, since we only have one converter in this case, we cannot observe the power sharing established by the primary control. And here, the active power of the only converter refers to the full required power estimated for this microgrid by the specified nominal AC voltage and load resistance values. Now, the voltage response plot, which is regulated by the reactive power flow due to the primary control implemented. As we can see, the output voltage presents a stable response and closely reads the voltage nominal value, but indeed has a small deviation that it needs to be restored by a secondary control loop. And finally, the frequency plot, which is regulated by the active power from the primary control, and that is here demonstrating a stable operation of the system but that is clearly showing that by applying only the primary control loop, the output frequency response presents a steady state error, which needs the secondary control loop to mitigate it. All in all, we can see that the objective of this case study of implementing a primary control loop based on the droop control method was accomplished. In the next video, I will be covering an island mode adding a secondary control loop. And I look forward to have you all along too. Thank you.